Well, it's a little bit dreary today. The sun just never did quite make it out, and it's kind of chilly, and oh, I don't know. It's not that cold, but it's just not real bright and cheerful out there in the orchard today. So uh, I snuck off and uh, ran into town, and I picked up a whole bunch of hot mochas. I'm going to see if I can uh, make my crew go up the road whistling today. Headed home after a 12 hour day. See you guys tomorrow. Don't be late for work now. Well, it's the end of another long day. And the wind has been blowing all day long. And that old cold wind just strains the energy out of you. It just sucks it out of you. It leaves you just a hollow shell of a person. <laughs> But I had a pretty good day. A productive day. All right. See you guys in the morning. Don't be late. I don't know how well this will show up. I'm kind of shooting into the sun. But these are some trees we did about, uh, I think, four or five years ago. I think they're probably coming fifth leaf right now. And they did very, very well. So we're hoping to have the same results over here. Pink Lady is what we're putting on. That's the name of the apple we're crafting today. Pink Lady. This is what happens when the painter climbs a real steep hill. <laughs> He's down and he can't get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> Y'all probably can't see this in the video. But it's snowing out here today. Cold. Someone asked me on Instagram, I think, how these guides are attached to the blade. Um, to make that receiving slot, you really have to have a hand on both ends of that blade. So this is a little guide that we make up made from aluminum uh, that gives you a place to grab the end of that blade without cutting yourself works pretty well anyway that's how it's attached we just drill it and put a set screw on each side that's all there is to it well this doesn't work for bark graft because you need when you come up that bark you need a real sharp, real sharp edge. And also you need to be able to flip that bark open and this rounded, rounded edge just doesn't quite do it. So I'm going to put it in the vise. I'm going to score it right across there just to get rid of that rounded, rounded tip. I need a real sharp, I need a real sharp edge at the end of that blade right there. So I'm gonna cut it off right there yeah that's what I'm gonna do mm -hmm. okay there is of course a number of ways to do this I've done it many times with a file just score it on each side and and then it'll snap off the cutlery folks they just hate to hear they cringe when I tell them I'm gonna put that uh, $150 Hinkles in the vise and snap the end off but anyway this is what I'm gonna do but I have to put the camera down because I just can't, uh, I won't be steady enough with one hand. It's a beautiful knife and I don't want to mess it up, but I'm anxious to try the metal. I'll take that over to the grinder and uh, smooth that edge up. We used to actually put a real sharp real sharp uh, corner on it right there when we were doing wedge grafting because you use that to to knock the wedge out after you cut it all right i'm gonna clean that up and see how much blade i got left i had to i know that shortened it quite a bit but it'll be fine it'll be just dandy okay this is my new bark grafter now victor oh it's sharp and it cuts so straight look at that 
Ah, beautiful. Another one on there. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be just fine. I'm done. Thank you. Just going to just gonna clean that up so you don't catch your finger on it or something. Oh yeah, that's good. Although I got my mouth full of signs. Can't see where I'm at. Man, this thing is nice. Well, it's 10 after 1 and we got to change jobs in the middle of the day. I don't like doing that. You lose your momentum, you know. You have to move and go 5, 6 miles and then start up again. But, it is a beautiful day though, I can say that, it is, a, it is a dandy, yep. <laughs> talking to Todd. Come on Todd. One more time, they understand you. <laughs> you turkey. He's like, I don't play all that goblin stuff. Hmm. Oh. These new bars I got, I didn't notice when I bought them. They have no place to oil. No place to oil the sprocket. Uh, I don't like that much. Maybe they figure it slings enough oil from the chain oiler. But that doesn't get down here in this gear. You know, I've been doing this 40 years. Well, I've been around the sauce since I was, since about 1962. So do the math. Yeah, that was 64. Anyway, I've never split a bar in my entire career and lifetime. I've seen guys split them, but I always oil them. I mean, uh, grease them. I've always greased these bars. Been kind of a stickler about that. So uh, now they don't even oil them, it looks like. What do you think about that Troy tree guy? Tree guy Troy? Troy the tree guy? What do you think? Well, Mike, you recall a couple years ago I did a video where I inarched a cherry tree. And the guy was so happy because he felt like I saved the tree. And uh, the mice had girdled it really bad just at ground level. There was nothing we could uh, graft into on the bottom. So I had him plant young trees to inarch. Well, his printers came by and cut them all off with the loppers. And he was pissed. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, I don't know. It's going to be really hard to get them to lay down on the wood because they're planted at such an angle. Look at that one. It's planted two feet out from the trunk, and it should be right up next to the trunk. But there's so many roots there, they just can't can't get down in there. And plus the roots of the trees that they planted last time for me to inarch are now in the way. So they're going on the outside of those, and it's just 
going to be really tough. But uh, I don't know. I got this one to lay down. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's a good uh, three quarter inch diameter. So that's good. If it hooks up, it will definitely feed the tree. So I got two more to go and I'm hoping I don't snap one when I go to angle it in there. I don't know, we'll see. Well, hi kids. Are you chillaxing? Well, we are bark grafting apples. I don't know what they are now, but they're going to royal red. It's not very often we put on a red variety anymore. But they're starting to make a little bit of money if you got the right one. Jorge's over there. We got uh, Rich back here taping and and uh, some painters back there somewhere and. Uh, it's a painter way back there. Obviously, we're using the crew from the ranch. Of course, if it was our people, they would not be that far behind. Victor, you want to say anything about that knife you're using? Oh, that's a pretty good knife. You like it, huh? Yep, I like it too. Koi like it too. <laughs> now I have to tell. Now I have to tell him the story about Koi and Roy. Okay, my friend Rich and I were down here yesterday kind of checking out these rigs and uh, and I pointed out to him there was something interesting. Boy, I like those panels. No, no can. You don't need them. I like those wheels too on that one back there. It looks kind of like the ones. Well, no, they're a little different than Detroit wheel. But anyway, I told Rich there's something kind of interesting about this. This truck here, and I don't know, I said, is it a, got a three-speed brownie, or has it got uh, a, a high and low range, or it's got a PTO takeoff, or what's the deal, because it's got two sticks, and I thought that was kind of interesting, and, and I just talked to the owner, and he says, oh, no, no, that's a three-speed brownie, so that's pretty cool, man, it's got a three and a four, a four and a three. Ain't that something in this old rig? 41, 46, I don't know. Hard for me to tell the difference, but that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, he found out I was interested in this and he took me up to his shed. And of course, there sits uh, in his shed, there's a, I think, a 56. Tri five station wagon, a little, uh, I believe a 30, no, 40, what was it, 41, 41 Chevy pickup, all done up, really nice. He did it for his daughter. Station wagon he got for his wife, and then uh, he and his son built, uh, he kind of built it, he said, but his son helped. A beautiful, beautiful 67 Camaro, all done up, really nice. You know, with that paint, paint and things that I don't do. But, uh, I probably would. If I had a 67 Camaro, I probably would. I uh, painted my Impala. There's a place for it. And then there's a place for rat rods. Somebody asked me on uh, Instagram, uh, Where's this stuff located exactly? And I said, it's located exactly where nobody will be snooping around and getting into stuff that they shouldn't. <laughs> He's got it kind of hit out, as it should be. All right, enough of this.
Well, here's some trees that Victor and I bought it. Oh, I don't know, Victor, what, about six years ago? I can go look at the video and I can tell you. And matter of fact, that's what I'm going to do. This is going to be a follow-up video, but you can see, you can see right there where, where we put the bud. And then they cut a tree off above it, and this is the bud growing now. I don't remember what we put on here. But boy, they look good. It makes you feel good to come back and see them growing like this. I'm going to go look up that video and see when we did this. Well, I was here grafting about a month ago, I guess. Uh, something like that. Three weeks ago, uh, we did these trees, and I was explaining that this is a good way to graft. Well, pretty much the only way to graft cherry trees. Once they get that age and stumps get that size, they just won't uh, take successfully. But if you cut them back and then grow these young, vigorous sucker wood on here, uh, you can graft onto that and pretty much guarantee them. As you can see, they're doing uh, doing quite well. This is what we like to see. We come out and see our little babies taking off there. So this is going to be uh, very successful. I, uh, I haven't found one out here yet that's not growing. So that's a good sign. Sign, get it? <laughs> well, it's always fun to come back and do a little follow-up visit, check on the, the little graphs and see how they're doing three, four weeks later. And the ones we just looked at look really good. We did not find anything that's not growing. That's pretty, uh, pretty unusual for cherries because cherries are very difficult to graft. Uh, we got to check on these little guys that we did over here. This is where I locked Victor in the outhouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember that day. You remember that day? I thought you might remember that day. Well, I don't see them growing yet, but we got to get a little closer. What a view. And look at these little guys. They're doing quite fine as well. Yep. Looking good. I think another 40 years, Victor, we'll have this figured out. We almost know what we're doing now. Well, I'm driving my favorite pickup today. And this is the last job of the season. We were supposed to be finished last Saturday. And then this client added uh, three more jobs. And we're good with that. More work is good. So if it doesn't rain, they will finish tomorrow. These short rows over here, they've already done one, two, three, four, five, and they did six, and they didn't start until, I don't know, hour and a half ago. Anyway. Yeah, they're little short trees, Rich. You would really enjoy these. Okay, I'm out of here. I've done my job. I cut up the wood for them.